What's going on, guys? It's your boy Woodsy out here, coach of the West Virginia Knockbiles, bringing you my week six match for QDL. Uh, we play Dustin in the win this week, who is uh, another coach that went the route of uh, quality over quantity as far as his draft went. Uh, I mean, he only has eight mons, which is the minimum amount we are allowed to bring, but uh, his top six mons here that uh, you can see up top are basically an OU team. Uh, like post home gen 8 OU, I wouldn't even be surprised that people were actually running that team before Doug Trio got banned. So, uh, you know, it's it's another team that maybe it's a little easy to prep for just because I have a pretty good idea of what he's going to bring. But a lot of these mods are very versatile too. So, uh, I think if you're going to draft a team that doesn't have that many mods, this would be a good way to do it because Jirachi, Clefable, Hydreigon, uh, Rotom could all really run so many different sets. So, uh, this, and they're all pretty bulky and can take hits and stuff, so I think that's a, a pretty good way to go about it. Uh, Jirachi, Clefable, High Dragon is just a great core in general. Uh, that Fairy Dragon Steel coverage and such. Uh, Jirachi is something that could be a good defensive, like Wish Passer with Stealth Rocks, U-Turn, etc. Could be a Scarfer and try to get Iron Head flinches on me. Uh, it could even run like set up calm mind or something like that. Uh, you could get very creative with Jirachi too. I mean, those are all of the standard sets, but you could get uh, it has a great move pool. I uh, get stuff like healing wish and stuff too, so uh, he could get very creative with his Jirachi. Uh, Clefable is another mon that has so many good sets. It has uh, two very good abilities in Unaware and Magic Guard. Uh, I would say typically Magic Guard is run, but uh, Unaware is also very viable. Uh, he could run something like a Wish Teleport set now, which is very handy. Uh, you know, another Wish Passer that he could bring. Uh, again, another Fat Rocker he could bring. It has like T-Wave Spam too. Or it could run Life Orb with like Bolt Beam and Moon Blast and Fire Coverage or something like that. Uh, again, another mon that could run set up with Calm Mind or Cosmic Power. So, uh, shutting it down from Earth, figuring out what set Clefable is early is something that's going to be important for me, I think. So I know how to take care of it. Uh, High Dragon, very good breaker. Uh, gets access to Nasty Plot now, meaning that, uh, you know, it was already a pretty good breaker because Dark Pulse is pretty spammable, along with Draco Meteor, especially because it does have coverage like Flash Cannon to deal with Fairy types. And it also gets Flamethrower to deal with my type of Bulu, which is a little bit better than Flash Cannon. Uh, it also gets very good utility with Roost and Defog and U-Turn and such. So uh, High Dragon is another mon that could do a lot of different things well. It could also be pretty bulky, surprisingly. Uh, then he has Dugtrio as a Trapper. Um, so I have to be careful of him revenge killing my stuff with Dugtrio. Because uh, if there's something that I need and I let it get low... He could revenge kill it and guaranteed get the kill on me. Uh, I have stuff like Heatran, for example, that could be very susceptible to getting trapped by a Doug Trio. So I do expect him to bring it. Uh, Gyarados, pretty much... It can be like a bulky Intimidate set with like D-Wave and stuff, but I think generally speaking, I would expect a Dragon Dance set. Uh, Dragon Dance Gyarados is a very big threat, especially now that it gets good coverage moves like Power Whip to deal with bulky water types. So, uh, you know, Waterfall, Ice Move, Earthquake, Power Whip, etc. could be uh, pretty good coverage along with that. And uh, if it gets set up with like Moxie, you could even run like Scarf Moxie and get set up with attack boost and stuff. So it could be a very good endgame cleaner. Uh, Rotom Heat is another like bulky pivot mon that he could run uh it could run stuff like defog screens vault switch too and be a very good support mon it could also be uh, an offensive mon it's another pokemon that got access to nasty plot this generation so it could be very good offensively it could be a good scarf mon uh it could even be a good specs mon etc uh rotom mo has a lot of uh, viability and versatility in that sense it also has a pretty good typing with uh Electric type plus levitate is pretty good. You know that fire typing also likes that levitate. His only weaknesses I think are like water and rock. And rock's not something that is all that common of a move to be run offensively. So yeah, random he could be a pretty good bulky pivot. And then getting into his low tiers that I probably less so expect him to bring would be Cryogonal. Who could be a good hazard removal because uh, 
in among these Rotoms, like his only really good hazard remover. Um, I mean, High Dragon does learn Defog, but I think that you probably don't want to be using Defog on High Dragon all that often. So uh, Cryogonal is another good option for that. Getting access to Rapid Spin, and it can run heavy duty boots with those and be able to ignore those super effective stealth rocks. Uh, it can also run like Freeze Dry and Toxic and gets Recover and is pretty bulky on the special side along with being pretty fast. So, uh, it definitely has its, like, niche usage, I think, but, uh, I don't really expect it. And then Lantern is another bulky pivot. He has a lot of bulky pivots on his team. Uh, with, uh, stuff like Water Absorb and Vault Absorb, so he could, uh, run either or as an immunity. And, uh, even if he doesn't have, like, even if he's, uh, Vault Absorb, you know, he takes water hits pretty well, so either way he goes with that. Uh, he's a very good switch into both of those types. And uh, he could run, like, Bolt Switch and uh, with Toxic and, you know, Bolt Beam coverage with Hydro Pump is very good. Or Scald or whatever he wants to run. But, uh, again, I have a Swapper, so I don't really expect him to be bringing that either. Uh, so, getting into the game plan here. Uh, starting with my defensive core, we have, especially defensive Heatran, which I think is just good, generally speaking, as a matchup. Uh, it is dedicated to being able to shut down that Clefable because uh, Heatran is one of the few mods that can really deal with any set that Clefable wants to bring with Toxic Taunt and Flash Cannon. Uh, if it's a setup set, I could just taunt it and keep it from Flash Cannoning. If it is unaware, I could Toxic it down. And if it is Magic Guard, Flash Cannon will probably be doing enough damage if I get a taunt on it and don't let it get recovery up anyway. Uh, also, generally speaking, it's pretty good against Jirachi because I could just Lava Plume that down. Uh, it's not going to be appreciating all that, and it can't really hit Heat Train with anything other than, like, maybe a Drain Punch or something like that. It does get a War Sphere, but because I am running specially defensive, I don't really think it's going to be doing all that much damage. Um, it could be a pretty good Draco Meteor switch in, because I, I am running specially defensive, and it is a resist. Uh, it could be a decent Rotom Heat switch in, which I can't really touch Rotom Heat with anything other than Toxic, but I think getting a Toxic off on that thing is pretty nice. I am running the Shed Shell because of that aforementioned Dug Trio could just trap me at any time, and I don't want that to happen because, uh, you know, Dug Trio gets on the field against my Heatran, I just automatically lose them on without the Shed Shell at least. So, uh, you know, I'm wearing that to prevent that. Uh, going past that, we have another specially defensive mod with Tapu Bulu. This one is specifically here to deal with High Dragon. It's not really here to do anything else, uh, where if he's running anything other than Specs or, like, a Modest Life Orb set, he will not be able to two-hit KO me, even with, like, a Flamethrower, or I think it was Fire Blast, even. Which I expect him to be running uh, Timid Scarf, just to be able to guaranteed outspeed a plus one Haxorus and revenge kill it with a dragon move so uh keeping that in mind a scarf high dragon will never be able to two shot my bulu and i could oko in return with play rough leech seed is just there as a good middle ground play if i think he's gonna switch because uh you know leech seed could hit everything on his team and keep me healthy or whatever my next switch in healthy as well synthesis just there to generally keep healthy protect the all same idea just to get extra turns of recovery or potentially scout out like a scarf move or something like that. Uh, moving on from that, our last defensive set here is Swampert, even though this is the first time I'm bringing a really a more offensive Swampert with adamant nature rather than like bold or especially defensive or whatever. Uh, the equivalent of Edgequake coverage here running high horsepower, of course, so that my Earthquakes don't get uh, weakened by my own grassy terrain. Yawn is there because Edgequake does hit a lot of his team very well, with the exception of High Dragon and physically defensive Clefable. Uh, you know, standardly speaking, I would be able to run something like Superpower for the High Dragon and be able to hit hit as well. But if he runs physically defensive Clefable, which I think he will because I do have like Haxorus and I have Glade and so forth. Um, uh, it'll be able to eat high horsepowers, whereas, like, especially defensive Clefable would probably, or I think it's uh, just a chance to shot with high horsepower. And it is also my rocker of the week because uh, this is a good pivot to, again, Rotom Heat because I am uh, immune to those vault switches and I quad resist overheats and so forth. Or no, just, I think, just regular resist it. But, um, and I also shut down his lantern if he chooses to bring it, and it could be decent against Jirachi, generally speaking, too. Uh, going past that, we have a Trick Room Room Service Glade, 
uh, if the room service procs, I will be slower than everything on his team, even without room service, if I decided to set it up a second time. Um, I think the only things that underspeed me would be Lantern and Clefable, which uh, with max HP, I could eat a Moonblast from Clefable surprisingly well. I think it only does about 50%. It's a roll to two hit KO, I believe. But I think it's a roll in my favor, and uh, Lantern's not going to be doing all that much to delay either with that max HP. Uh, another, like, decent, half-decent, like, it could eat a hit from High Dragon if it needs to, and uh, kill it with Close Combat in return. Close Combat hits pretty much everything on his team, with the exception of Clefable and Gyarados, which is why I am running Poison Jab and Thunder Punch, respectively. This is just something that I, uh, I plan on kind of setting up early to mid-game, and just getting some chip off on stuff to set up a late game for my two other offensive mods to clean potentially um i don't really expect Glade to be uh you know winning the game on its own or anything but i just think close combat is something that could get good ship on his team early uh moving on from that we have physically offensive expert belt greninja with night slash waterfall gunk shot u-turn uh i think with that i hit a uh, majority of his team super effectively i think Things that I don't would be like a Gyarados or a Lantern and a Cryogonal. Cryogonal's physically physical defense is pretty low, so I'm not all that worried about that. And with something like Lantern or Gyarados, I could just U turn out on it anyway. Uh, Gunk Shot is there for that physically defensive clump that I mentioned. It will two hit KO. Uh, I think it actually does a lot, even. Night Slash is just a spammable move along with Waterfall. Uh, this is a, something that could revenge kill a lot of the stuff on his team. It's faster than, I think, everything on his team. So this is my speed control, generally speaking. I think it has the ability to two-hit KO everything on his team, with the exception of Gyarados and Lantern, like I said. Uh, if I get the right moves off. But, uh, m mostly speaking, this is just, like, maybe a late-game cleaner if I get his team shipped down pretty well, or just a speed control mon in general. Finally, we got the meat on the bones of the team here. We have Dragon Dance Haxorus. Um, the only way he really has of beating Dragon Dance Haxorus is with that Scarfy Dragon that I mentioned, or with uh, like a Baberi Berry Clefable, or if I miss my Iron Tail on Clefable, or something like that. Uh, because Dragon Claw really hits his entire team. Uh, except for Jirachi Clefable, which Jirachi is not going to be loving an Earthquake, and it's not going to be killing me or anything from full health, and Iron Tail is going to blow away a Clefable if it lands and if he is not a Beery Berry. So, um, Adamant and Life Orb, just because I don't really need the Speed Creep. Anything other, I think uh, Adamant was enough to outspeed Gyarados and not Rotom, I think it was. Because I don't really think I need to outspeed Rotom without the Dragon Dance anyway. Because A, Rotom can't really touch me with anything other than, I mean, a will wisp would be scary, but, you know, after the plus one, I'm going to be outspeeding Rotom anyway. And I don't think you would bring Scarf Rotom just because you would expect me to outspeed it with him at plus one anyway. So we are running the Adam to get extra damage off. And with that, getting into the battle here. Uh, he does bring five out of his, his big six here. No Jirachi, which I was very surprised by because I thought uh, Jirachi could be decent here. Uh, uh, specifically for like Bulu and stuff. But uh, I guess looking at it, I do have a lot of things on my team that deal with Jirachi pretty well. He does bring Cryogonal instead. Uh, likely as his hazard removal for the week. So uh, keeping that in mind, uh, one of the first things I noticed was he brought all four of his uh, high horsepower immunities, so offensive swampers probably not going to be doing all that much this week. Uh, it could still be good for shutting down Rotom and getting up rocks. But uh, that was the first thing I noticed. And then looking at my lead matchup here, Heatran, uh, again, I'm, I brought Heatran just because it matches up generally well with pretty much his whole team. Uh, the only leads that Heatran would not like would be Gyarados, really, because even if he leads Dugtrio, I do have the Shed Shell, and I could just go hard in the Swampert or Tapu Bulu or something like that and not really care about it. And Gyarados isn't really a Mon that I expected to see with a lead, so I do lead my Heatran here as he leads Cryogonal, likely as a counter lead to my Swampert, because he is likely carrying Freeze Dry, right? So uh, I think this is an opportunity to just click off. Free Lava Plume, maybe get a burn off onto something early here, as he does go Duck Tree, I think, and he's going to trap me, but I do have the Shed Shell and get out of there, as High Horsepower is going to do really nothing to my Tapu Bulu here. 
So I just take this as an opportunity to get a free player off off on this something as he does go into Rotom Heat, who isn't really going to be taking any damage from this. Um, expecting him to maybe go for Will O Wisp or Toxic on my Swapper. I go into Heatrans because I'm thinking that I'm going to be immune to those things. But uh, he does make the play on Vault Switch and gets out of there, so I got that play wrong. And he keeps up his momentum and gets up big Gyarados. Uh, Gyarados is the thing on his team that I probably had the least good answers to. So I go into my Swampert here knowing that if he, as long as he's not Power Whip, which I didn't think he would bring Power Whip, uh, that I would be able to eat hits pretty well. Uh, I was scared of him being dual stab with like Waterfall and Bounce, which is why I didn't go into my Tapu Bulu or my Gallade, who looking back probably would have been able to handle this set a lot better than Swampert. But I didn't know what his set was going to be. Uh, he was sub DD, as you can see here. And uh, at this point, I still didn't know what his attacks were. So I'm just going to keep spamming Stone Edge here as he keeps substituting, which is pretty bad for me because Stone Edge could miss pretty uh, frequently. As you'll see, I do miss that one. And uh, he will get his sub up. Uh, Stone Edge again. Also, I'm going to have to rely pretty heavily on with Swamper here because he does have four immunities to high horsepower. So uh, killing my PP because Stone Edge only has eight PP. By doing this is also pretty bad for my Swampert. Uh, luckily, I do land a, a lot of these Stone Edges. Only missing one of those is really pretty lucky. I didn't really take all that much from Waterfall. I do think it was actually a roll for him to kill me on the second Waterfall in that turn, but he does off the sub. And uh, he does switch out, unfortunately, for him, because I do miss the next Stone Edge, so he would have been able to get that free sub up and got a, get a kill there, but uh, he did get scared of me landing the Stone Edge, which can't say I blame him. And uh, he gets his high dragon in though, so that's no big deal for me because I could just go into Big Bulu here and uh, take absolutely nothing from a Dark Pulse. Click Leech Seed knowing that the Rotom's probably going to get in, but I didn't want to get too cute and make a double. Uh, so I just click Leech Seed and miss, which is a little unfortunate, but not all that big of a deal. I go hard into Swamper this time because uh, last time I showed that my switch in was Heatran, so I thought maybe he would just Vault Switch again. But he does get me and goes for the Will of Wisps and pretty much shuts down my Swamper for this game. Like, I, I think other than getting up rocks, I'm as good as dead here. I know that he's either going to get into High Dragon or Clef here, so I just want to go for a Yawn to force another switch. And uh, this time I am going to go for my rocks and get those up, and that's pretty much... Oh, Swampert's going to be good for this game. Uh, I don't want to sit here in front of this High Dragon. I think I do sit here and, yeah, I click Long Yawn here because I know that my Swampert's pretty much useless and I know that he's Scarf at this point. So, or at least I think he's Scarf. I don't actually have proof of that, but I'm pretty confident that he was. So I just click Yawn. As he goes into Cryogonal, and now I did think that he was going to stay in and just kind of eat the Yawn, but I didn't know if he was going to Rapid Spin or Freeze Dry, so I didn't want to stay in on the Freeze Dry. I figured Glade was a pretty good mid-ground there to cover both of those plays, and uh, this was a good opportunity to set up my Trick Room in this Cryogonal space. As he does go into Clef, uh, like I said, in Team Builder, I could eat Immune Blast from Clef pretty well, and Poison Jab will too hit KO it. So I go for the Poison Jab. I go for the second poison jab on Rotom because I know that um, I know that close combat wasn't going to kill, and I didn't want to lower my own defenses. So uh, unfortunately for me, he was Citrus Berry because otherwise I would have been able to get a kill this turn with close combat. But um, and th this is where I maybe misplayed because I knew he had Willow Wisp, right? So I probably shouldn't have stayed in here. I probably should have gone into like Swampert or Heatran or something like that. But I do stay in here because I kind of had the mindset going into this game that once I propped my Trick Room with Glade, I was just going to stay in. Uh, so he does burn me, unfortunately. I do go for the close combat here because uh, I think it would have killed Rotom at that range, or at the very least it was a roll or something like that. So he does reveal to be Keyberry Clef, which is interesting to me. I, I, I don't really know what that was for. Maybe it was to wall hacks or for longer than if he wasn't at plus one or something like that. I don't know. But um, I don't want to let him do set up on me and do cleft things, so I switch out into my Heatran. Uh, I clicked Toxic here because I didn't want to let him get a free Wish Pass into Rotom or Gyarados. There wasn't really anything I could do to stop that once I saw that he was a Wish. Other than get a Toxic off on it to maybe punish it a little bit, but uh, he does opt to go into High Dragon instead. Which uh, I think getting in his Gyarados there was probably the play because Gyarados was like the biggest threat to me. Um... But he does go into High Dragon. I could just go back in the Tapu Bulu, even if he does make the prediction here, which he does, and click Flash Cannon. It only does 43% to me. And uh, knowing that I'm going to be able to eat even two more of those, I'm pretty free to just click Leech Seed here. 
so I do do that. And with the leech seed recovery, leftovers, grassy terrain, and everything, I'm just going to be getting a stupid amount of recovery here. This high dragon's taking a lot of damage from toxic leech seed. I'm thinking maybe he wants to switch. I know I'm going to live this flash cannon anyway, so I do go for the double leech seed on the potential switch. Knowing that even if he does just click flash cannon again, I mean, you see I'm getting all this recovery back, and he is taking a lot of damage. And I know that in the back I have protect for this turn. So I could just uh, kill him off with all that chip damage on this turn. And this is another play that I thought was maybe a little weird from him. He goes into Dugtrio to trap me. Uh, he does have to take Sludge Wave, but I am specially defensive, which he should have known, so it's not going to kill me. And I could just kill this Dugtrio now with Play Rough. Uh, I think going into Rotom Heat or Cryogonal was probably a much better play for him. But, uh... Oh, but he doesn't go for that, but he, now he takes this as an opportunity to get set up with Gyarados again, potentially. Uh, I know that my Tapu Bulu is useless because it loses all four of his remaining mons, so I just stay in here and click play rough to not let him get set up. But uh, he does just go straight for the kill. And this is where I pull my Uno reverse card. I know that Gyarados isn't going to kill me with anything, so this is a good chance to set up with my Haxorus. Uh... He goes Clefable at this point. I, I know that he's not Babiri Berry, so as long as I land an Iron Tail, it's going to die, which I do land. And uh, his team is chipped down pretty well here, even with the Intimidate. I don't really need the attack boost just because his team is so weak at this point. And Haxorus, with that plus one speed to outspeed everything on his team, is going to be able to just clean everything up here uh, just by spamming Dragon Claw on everything else. So GG to Dustin in the win this week. Uh, we move on to 6-0 and now in the QDL, keeping that undefeated streak alive, and we will see you next week against my guy, Jer SD, for Week 7.